The number of children that have gone into foster care in the last 20 years is 9 million children. It's more than double the amount of children that were in foster care prior to the 2005 opinion and the Clintons putting in their, their Child Welfare Reform Act. So your show just, you know, uh, a few weeks ago did a show on the Marshalls, and it was astonishing that the Marshalls rescued all of these children that were being sex trafficked out of the foster care system and they turned around and put them right back into the same system that they got trafficked out of in the first place. So the general public isn't aware. So the first thing we have to do is bring about an awareness. Everyone thinks they have parental rights. Folks, there's never been in the Constitution, so we've never had a constitutional right. You know, what we had is court supplied rights. And so the court would uphold parental rights, but they weren't in the Constitution. And and just clearly firmly said that. You can read the Constitution. Nowhere in the Constitution when you say you have the right to your child. The government determines what's in the best interest of the child. So. Business Game Changers, I'm Sarah Westall. I have Dwight Mitchell coming back to the program and we're gonna talk about the American supply of children ending the human trafficking supply chain that is coming out of the foster care system. I know that it comes out of many other areas as well, you know, South America, Haiti, everywhere else, but in our foster care system, they are seeing hundreds of thousands of kids each year missing, which are being funneled into trafficking and sex, you know, the organ trafficking, sex trafficking, all sorts of nightmarish, hellish kinds of situations. They're just losing these kids. I don't believe they're necessarily losing them. I, I think it's on purpose. And so he's going to come and talk about how this system, how the foster care system has doubled since the year 2000 and why. What was the legislation? What was the Supreme Court case? What was the government incentives? I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that this is a planned situation. And he also, they have a solution that a group of congressmen have put together to end their supply of children in the United States, give parents back their rights and end the supply for trafficking. And that's why I wanted to talk to him. It was a really important interview. I'm hoping that this is the beginning of something that really gets talked about. Nothing happens unless it penetrates into the masses and people understand. And that's why they work so hard to censor us because they do not want the masses to start talking about anything. If they are unaware and they don't fight about it, they, it doesn't percolate up, nothing ever gets done. So that's why it's so important that this information gets out there. So he has a petition that they have together on the whitehouse.gov website to actually bring this bill to Congress. They need 100,000 votes or not votes, they need 100,000 signatures. And so hopefully that they'll get they'll get that. And if not, they're gonna have to do it again. But I would hope that every single person watching this video would go and sign that petition. And it'll only take you a little bit of time, whether you're listening on audio or video or however you're looking at this, just take a second and sign it. You're not asking for money this time, just asking you for a little bit of time. Sign this, that'll give, stop the supply of children into this foster care system. So before I get into this this uh, interview, again, I'm gonna tell you to sign up for my newsletter at sarahwestell.com. If you have not done that yet, you can go, there's a subscriber uh, link now at the top of the website where you can go and subscribe to everything that I have. Please do that if you haven't done that yet. And now let's get into this important interview with Dwight Mitchell. Hi Dwight, welcome back to the program. Hi Sarah, how are you today? I am good, and I saw your constitutional amendment, and I want to get into the, the background on why you're doing it. It's a parent's right amendment, and, you know, I've done a lot of coverage on human trafficking and the child, you know, the hundreds of thousands of children that are missing from the, you know, the welfare foster care system every year, and how you know we've really identified that that system and the children, whether it comes, it's not just from the welfare system, but it's also from you know South America and the Indian reservations and Haiti, and it's all over the world. But in our country, so hundreds of thousands of kids every year are missing from the foster care system. And 
you know, the evil cabal, we have very much been able to identify that they're using these children to fund their operations for organ harvesting, sex trafficking, um, and other ritual abuse. I mean, just all the above. They've got it down to a science of making money. But what was so interesting is the background on what triggered this, your activity. Could you talk about that? I, I, I think this is key to ending their American supply of children or significantly reducing it. So can you talk about the background and the history of this? Sure. You know, uh, you know as, you, as you know from our past discussions, Family Preservation Foundation is about, uh, our, our primary goal is, is keeping children out of the foster care system. And what a lot of people don't understand is that uh, our parental rights were firmly established and were upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court up until 2000. Uh, so historically, parents had rights. Children couldn't be removed from parents without a compelling government interest, such as sexual assault or, or serious physical abuse, uh, not something like a bond or spanking, or now where 84% of the children are being put into foster care for something called neglect, where there's no harm to the child whatsoever. So, you know, our goal is keeping children out of the foster care system, which actually relates back to a famous case in 2000 known as Troxel versus Grainville. So in, in 2000, the U.S. Supreme Court had a case uh, talking about parental rights. And up until 2000, uh, since inception of, of the United States, parental rights were upheld and it was, it was a fundamental right and, and strict scrutiny applied whenever you wanted to, to, to terminate or separate a parent from his child. So what, is, what, what happened is that there was a split decision with the Supreme Court and there were six separate opinions by the different justices, and none of the opinions got a 5-4 vote. In fact, Justice Scalia actually held that parents have no constitutional right to their children whatsoever. Only Justice Thomas said that you know, parental rights are a fundamental right, in his opinion, which should be upheld strict scrutiny. So having said that, Let's fast forward to what's been going on since 2000, which most people aren't aware of. So the, the Clinton administration came forward and they, they proposed a number of bills when it came to foster care and adoption and, and things of that nature, where they would pay social services to, to, to take children out of the home, and then they would pay them an additional money uh, for adoption. Uh, so with, with these two things in mind, the, the, the foster care system, removing parents from the children's home and putting them into foster care, not putting them in kin care, not putting them with their relatives, not putting them with the father if it was a single parent family, everything was shoving them into the foster care system. So what most people do not realize, and if you go to the Child Welfare Bureau, it's online, it's it's called the AFGAR report. We downloaded the last 26 for the last 20 years. The number of children that have gone into foster care in the last 20 years is 9 million children. It's more than double the amount of children that were in foster care prior to the 2000 Prosper opinion and the Clintons putting in their, their child welfare reform acts. So, those, those two key pieces of information, the Supreme Court not withholding parental rights and allowing the, the, uh, the individual states to, to do what they want. Um, for example, only five states out of the entire union has a parental right permanently. So what, what's actually happening is the kids are going into foster care, a social worker is going to a judge saying, I want to terminate this parent's parental rights. And it's happening. And the judge is like, fine. You know, literally one person, a social worker and a judge. They, they call themselves having a guardian ad litem in there also and a, a child for, the, you know, uh, an attorney for the child. Sometimes, not in every state. But they're all drinking coffee out of the same coffee pot. And all of these children are going to the foster care system 
where they're being abused. Uh, your show just, you know, uh, a few weeks ago did a show on the marshals, and it was astonishing that the marshals rescued all of these children that were being sex trafficked out of the foster care system, and they turned around and put them right back into the same system that they got trafficked out of in the first place. So that this is being done by design and it's systemic is something that um, I feel uh, wholeheartedly is is um, 100% true. And I don't ask people to believe what I think. I have supplied the government links on our websites. I said, go to these reports. I'm like, it's the government telling you we've taken 9 million children in 20 years. It's the government reports that are saying We've taken double the amount of children in the last 20 years than we've taken in, in, the, in all the preceding years. So it's not even Dwight Mitchell saying it, the U.S. government saying it. So that's a little bit of the history to why we're coming around and saying we need to get our parental rights back so they stop taking our children and putting them into the foster care system. Well, and the reason why this triggered me so much is that I think this is a huge step to ending their supply chain of these children. Because, you know, anybody that looks into human trafficking, they know the, the number one, one of the main suppliers is this foster care system, just like what you said when the marshals uh, rescued these kids. And they're taking kids, they're doubling the supply, and they're taking kids from parents that are perfectly legitimate or great parents that we covered last time. They just happen to be poor and not have the resources to fight for their kids. Now, why are you thinking that your particular approach, and you're working with um, uh, congressional representatives, so I want you to talk about that as well. Why do you think this approach will start, will turn around, will turn that spigot off and start to protect these children and these families from this nightmare, hellish situation we find ourselves in? Well, what's, what's interesting is that I feel that the general public is, isn't aware. So the first thing we have to do is bring about an awareness. Everyone thinks they have parental rights. Well, there's never been in the Constitution, so we've never had a constitutional right. You know, what we had is court-supplied rights, and so the court would uphold parental rights, but they weren't in the Constitution. And, and, and Justice Scalia firmly said that. He said, you can read the Constitution. Nowhere in the Constitution when you say you have the right to your child. The government determines what's in the best interest of the child. So by going to the, you know, our congressmen and our senators and saying, all right, we need this firmly established in the Constitution that you can't just take away a parent's child for you know, what you consider the best interest when they're a fit parent. So we, we look at the current system. We look at the current federal report. 84% of the children being taken, there was no physical harm to the child whatsoever. So wh whatever reason you have, you know, for, for taking the children, CPS, it's not valid. It's no harm to the child. I don't care what you think or what you say. Do your services, do whatever you need to do with that child in the home. So you can't tell me you have a compelling interest. You have a secondary motive. A, we know it's money and it's government funding. So that, that's part of it. But B, if we go back to, you know, the parental rights amendment that's before Congress this session, where there are 16, it has, you know, one sponsor and 15 co-sponsors, what this is in, in essence is saying is that unless I do something as a parent, I'm a fit parent. So this 84% of the children being removed without harm, okay, you, 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 that stops. Because now we have a constitutional right that unless you apply strict scrutiny and you come in and, and I say you should have a jury trial, this, a thief who steals a loaf of bread has more rights than a parent does. He gets a jury trial, Miranda, his Miranda rights are read, he has the Brady Law, he has the evidence. On the child custody side, it's a social worker and a judge that decides what goes on. There's no jury of your peers and your child is taken when there's no physical harm. So that we're talking about, I'm talking about cutting off 84% of all these cases 
that where there's no physical harm to the child. So that's what's so important about this parental rights amendment. That 84% number is going to shrink down. It has to because there's no physical harm to the child. And if you social services want to actually do something for the parent, fine, come in, work with the parent in the household. You know, if they're poor, give them, give them a bed, give them a food, whatever they need to keep that child in the, in the family home and to stop you from traumatizing these children and, and putting them in foster care. And then all of a sudden they're disappearing. You know, we're having thousands and thousands of children state after state after state with, where the kids are disappearing and, and CPS says, I, I don't know where they are. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know where they are? Yeah, that's unacceptable. It is. Right, we gotta stop this supply chain. And, and you know, my number one thing is, uh, well, both things, having parental rights is important, but this supply chain to these horrifying situations is just absurd that we're living in those conditions. So what, you know, so many members of Congress and Senates and whatever are involved in it. They make a lot of money. Anytime you can have a multi-trillion dollar business, there are politicians at the high level supporting it. It's just right. the way it works. And this right. is a very, very lucrative business. And so... A, a measure is to see what, because this is bipartisan. Anybody who doesn't support this is an idiot. I'm sorry. Right. This is very right. clearly bipartisan. This is not, a, a, you can't turn this into a partisan issue. We do not want kids trafficked. So it's almost as if, if these congressmen and people in Washington, who supports this and who doesn't? Who's involved with supporting this trafficking issue and who doesn't? And what are you seeing? Are you seeing uh, support? Because I, I would like to know that. It's almost like a litmus test. Are you supporting this evil behavior? Are you supporting the trafficking or are you not? And so what well, are you it, seeing on that front? You know, it, it's funny you should mention that because someone said something to, to me uh, recently a, about the sponsors of the bill. And it's, 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 supposed, it's supposed to be bipartisan and, and, it's not the first time the bill has been before the session. The House has introduced it. The Senate has introduced it. For some unknown reason, it's not being passed. And you know, one of the things that I found most interesting is there's no Democrats supporting the bill. I, I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm, I'm bipartisan. We're, we're a bipartisan organization. You know, we don't endorse you know, one political uh, field over another. But I found it very interesting that it's all of the Republicans that are calling for this parental rights amendment, and I see no Democrats. I've, found that I've actually called my senator and congressman. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get answers. I'm telling all the parents. I said, call all your senators, all your congressmen, and, and explain to me why. You know, I've, I've written to Senator Booker, and I've, I've written to uh, uh, Senator um, Menendez. I've I've written in Minnesota to, to Ileana Oman and all these people that are Democrats. And I'm like, and, and guess what? I've heard crickets. N none of them have replied to my to my um, my inquiry. And I'm sitting here like, I don't understand. I mean, at least acknowledge my email and say, we received your email. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. But they don't even acknowledge the email. And I know they get it because I have Outlook red receipts turned on so I know when people receive my emails and so I'm going to stop you for one second and this should not be partisan but I have been doing some research and I'm finding you know because throughout history both parties have had bad guys in their party but for some reason the Democrats have been blackmailed and taken over more a higher percentage right now of this evil behavior mm -hmm. and it is, it's disconcerting because they will not, it, why is this, why is it only Republicans? And I know it's because they have a higher percentage right now. Hasn't been like that all through history. But no. right now, in this point in history, it has nothing to do with their party platform. It has nothing no. to do with politics. It has to do with the fact that the evil guys have penetrated that party for some reason. It is not about their, and that's what the average person does not understand. Well, what, I, what I'm having a very difficult time understanding, just in totality, I'm like, oh, you know, 
I can't say all of the legislatures, but a vast majority of the legislatures are parents. And you would think that as a parent, you know, you would want your parental rights protected. You would make sure that your children are safe. You love your children and they're safe. They're at home. I, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm at this point, enough of this bee crap, you know, where they're, they're taking children away from sick parents because they want a second medical opinion. They, they want, they're questioning chemotherapy treatment. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about vaccinations or whatever. But if there are all these reasons they're taking children that are just so benign, so bizarre that I'm like, how can anyone in legislation not say, all right, this has to stop? Especially since the foster care system is losing so many children and, and is, is really a disaster. They're, it's not better. But you have to ask yourself also, you know, from a, from a federal perspective, you spent $590 billion in subsidy. That's just the federal government subsidizing the state. The state has to pay the other part. So I'm like, if you subsidize that much, so if we add the state back in, we know we're, we're talking over a trillion, you know. And so we're sitting here saying, you're spending all this money unnecessarily when 84% of the children haven't been harmed. What's the end game? You know, you're, you're, we're in a deficit. What, if, if you put this bill in, it literally has to come back to the way it was, you know, before 2000. I mean, if we've doubled the amount of children we've taken since 2000. So, you know, speaking directly to your question, there, there's an ulterior, you know, motive for them not. I almost want to see us get really aggressive and say, are you for trafficking? Are you supporting these traffickers? Or are you trying to end their supply chain? Are you for it or against it? And if you don't go for this, right. then you are supporting the traffickers and get a, and almost have a list that's very public that says, these are the people who are trying to end trafficking. And these are the people who right. have no interest in helping these children because it is that serious. And it is, this is what we're facing. And so we got to get in their faces and say, what is wrong with you? What are you blackmailed? Are you, are you getting paid off? What is, what is wrong with you? What is your real agenda? That's what I'm, are you getting well, yeah. any, are you getting any support from uh, the president on this? Uh, we are, it's funny you should say that because we had, we wrote the president about three weeks ago, uh, first lady and the vice president. Um, we did receive acknowledgement from the white house that they, they did receive our correspondence and they said they'll, they'll get back to us as soon as possible you know, understanding that it's a it's a very busy time of year and the, and, and the uh, elections are coming up. But they said we want to, you know, let you know and rest assured we did get your 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 correspondent and we will reply back to you. Oh, so that that was good to know. You know? So, so at least they're showing that they care, whereas at least the other ones didn't even give you a, a, any kind of respectful response at all. So I, I right. would like to see a response because we need to know where they stand on this issue. It's so important. I think I already know where he stands, but it, a formal response would be very um, nice to, to be able to get. Okay, so now how can the average person... Well, you person... look at what he's done also, though. Go ahead. You know, not to cut you off, but... No, go ahead. Uh, you know, by, by, by Trump signing the, the, the Family First Act three years ago, it was the first time that any meaningful reform to the foster care system has been put in place in the last 20 years while all these children are being taken and why, why the amount of children has been doubled. So Trump's Foster uh, Family First Act is directly designed to mitigate children being removed from the foster care system, I mean, from, from the family home, from fit parents, and put into the foster care system. And so if you look at what he's done from that perspective alone, and granted, he, he, he didn't just do it by himself. It was, it was a bipartisan bill that he signed into law, and he came back in and, and put in a CARES law for foster care. Uh, so he is the only president, in my humble opinion, um, although we're, we're 
you know, we're nonpartisan. I'm just calling a cow a cow who seems to have taken an active interest in trying to curb the taking of children from fit parents and putting them into foster care. He, his administration is the one who's put together the U.S. Marshals going after and finding these kids and, and working on the sex trafficking. Everyone else has sort of been giving it like lip service. So I'm, I'm looking at what's transpired in the last three and a half years as it relates to combating trafficking, as it relates to, to uh, reducing uh, the amount of children in foster care and, and, and things of that nature. Um, I humbly feel that he's the first president that's done anything since 2000 uh, in, in this regard. And you said for 30 years in the last interview that we had, you said for three decades. So is it longer than since 2000? It is. I was I was just putting it in the context of the Traxel versus Grainville um, uh, Supreme Court battle and the Clintons passing in 1997 is when they passed the act, uh, uh, act for foster care. So it's it's greater than 20 years. But I was just trying to align it so that people, if they really want a clear, concise timeline, I'm like, go to the Clinton administration. Look at when they signed the Bill in 1997. Look at when the Supreme Court came in 2000, three years later. And all of a sudden, you know, after, you know, supporting parental rights for hundreds of years, saying, well, we don't know if parental rights are, like, protected. I'm like, you're supposed to be the smartest people in the land. It's precedent. It's been precedent for hundreds of years since the formation of the country. And then all of a sudden, in 2000, you... Justices could, you know, I, you know, I have my own word, but you justices are going to overturn, you know, centuries of precedence when it comes to parental rights. And then all of a sudden, since that happened, the amount of children being put into foster care doubles and you're not doing anything about it. And so and, you know, you know, the parents are crying, the parents are screaming, you know, the kids are being taken, the kids are being trafficked. I mean, it's all over the media. It's all over the news. And. So for you not to do anything, for you, Senator and Congress, not to support this, it's either you're, you're a part of the solution or you're part of the problem or you have a secondary agenda. And so we are trying to fight this any way we can, which is why we put together this White House.gov petition in the first place. Because if we get 100,000 signatures in 30 days, the, the, uh, the uh, petition will be taken before Congress. So now we can come and say, Okay, we have 200,000, 300,000 people who are saying, Congress, you must do this. Like now, we want you to bring this bill to the floor and we want you to vote on it. And then we want to try and, and, and curb what's going on now. Because, like anything in, in politics, it's the squeaky wheel syndrome. You know, if we want to fight child trafficking, we want to stop it. You know, the parents have to speak out. They have to email their congressman and they have to literally say, if you aren't supporting this bill, we're not voting for you, you know, and that's one and one of many. But it, it really speaks to, the, the, you know, our nuclear family. If you if really, really think about it, you know, the family is the core to to, you know, America, to our soul. And if you're ripping these families apart and you're taking these child and you're traumatizing the children, by putting them in a foster care and then they're being like kidnapped and lost and and sex trafficked and things of that nature. Then, you know, we have a real fundamental core issue with America and its values if we're going to condone what's going on right now. And if you're not going to take a stand, you know, Mr. Senator or Mr. Congressman, then, then we have an issue because we don't need you up there. We don't need you up there and we need to identify who you are. And so we need to get this through so we can start saying, OK, these are the problem people because they're not they don't care about the American people at all. This is a nonpartisan. Right. Do you care about American people or do you not care? Yes or no? Correct. Okay, how can people sign this petition? Because I would like people to, as soon as you tell us where they can go, I'd like people to pause the video, go sign the petition, and then finish the video. So how do they get to this petition? Uh, the petition is, is on whitehouse.gov. There is a direct link on our, on our website. Um, I tell people the, the URL to our website, the, the short one is F 
P is in Peter, F, one is in Frank, dot org. And if you just go to our website, at the very top in the menu, it, it says amendment. And just drop down and click on the first link, and it, it takes you right to the petition page. And just click on the link and sign the petition. You just have to put in your, your email, uh, your first name and last name. They're going to, a pop-up is going to come that says, verify your email address so we, we know you truly signed this petition and it's not a robot and you just go and click and say yep uh, and just click on and verify and the petition is signed it's just that simple take less than a minute to do okay so are you getting on when is the last day that you can um get that all these uh, signatures need to be in uh we have until the, the 22nd of october Okay, so we have a little bit of time. Are you getting so, on? Um, are, are you? I would like to see you on many, many shows. And so, if there are hosts out there who have a decent sized audience, I would really hope that they contact you and they do an interview with you, so we can get this in front of more eyeballs and more people seeing this. I think that's very important. You know, one of the things that I I found disconcerting is that we put we put out a press release. Uh, a week ago, a little over a week ago. And uh, with PR Web, they send you back the analytics on the press release and like who picks it up and things of that nature. And so you know, we, we put together a press release that was video embedded. There were links to statistics, links to the bill, a summary of the bill. And you know, out of the 1.9 million news outlets in America, you know, 1% one, 1 picked it up. So, you know, I found it very um, I, I can't say strange that I'm like the mainstream media didn't pick this up at all. It's oh, like, as if they feel like it's not important. They don't care. You know? They are so controlled. They will protect traffickers at all co they will to protect this system to the death. They are funded by that system. I would not trust them. As far as I, this is an independent journalist uh, process, this is for the people who are not blackmailed and who are not controlled and the people who actually care about America. Anybody who supports us actually cares, but those people don't care about this country. They're, the majority of them are traitors. They're, tr they're supporting the riots. They c think they care about all these uh, minority groups, but yet you look at Minneapolis and the people who suffered, are, the mass majority are the minority business owners whose businesses were destroyed in the name of fighting for equal justice and getting rid of uh, systematic racism. Well, we, you just destroyed all these minority businesses. So these people do not care. They showed their true colors. We need independent journalists to come forward and say, yes, I care about the American people. I care about these children. I want to end this child trafficking supply chain. And so I'm gonna support you in this. So how can people get hold of you? Uh, you can go to our website at, at fpf1.org. Um, my contact information is on the website. Um, we're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, so we're on all, all the social media platform. We're not really on Instagram. I mean, we have an account, but we really haven't done too much on Instagram. Because most of what we've done is uh, parent focused. We're trying to in, in, in empower parents by providing them with knowledge. We have a, a free uh, CPS defense video education library. Um, so we're, we're constantly pushing out content as it relates to uh, pr protecting your parental rights, keeping your children safe, keeping them at home, you know, the, const the parental rights amendment. So we're, we're pushing out a lot of this content. Uh, we've done a few articles since you mentioned that we did a few articles on, on Black Lives Matter. And, you know, I, I feel all lives matter. But what people really don't understand and which I find interesting is that people listen to what they want to listen and they hear what they want to hear, but they don't investigate the facts. So when it comes to, to, to Minnesota and, and Minneapolis, since this is our heart and our hub, I found it very convenient and strange that when the mayor's office, the police, and everyone else said that everyone we have arrested to date 
for arson, burning down the police building, burning down black stores. They've all been, you know, Caucasian, far left people trying to incite violence under the Black Lives Matter banner. But I mean, you just They'd have say to go it was far look right. and just Google. They say it was far right. Far right. I'm sorry. Far, yeah, far, white far supremacists. Right, not left. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. My apologies. But no, that's okay. um, you know, you you sit and you look at this, and I'm and I'm like, guys, it's it's in the mainstream media. It's in the newspaper. You're not reporting it. There's a secondary agenda. I feel the whole Black Lives Matter movement from when it initially started. You know back in 2013, 14, has, has been usurped, you know, and now it's a slogan. And as you're saying, it's being funded by the wrong people and it's not going in the right direction. And I, you know, I'm sitting here looking at the lack of unity, the lack of organization. So, you know, I feel that there needs to be some, some cohesion, you know, uh, around it, you know, it needs to have not, integrity, you know, it needs to be free real. Speech, free speech. It, it, it needs to be right. real. Right. I mean, when you're not real, you lo you lose all you do is you actually hurt the cause more than you help it because now you're you're just not real. You want to break down. They've scrubbed that. The breaking down the nuclear family and all that. They've scrubbed that from their website because they know it makes them look bad. But they had it on their website, you mm -hmm. know. And then they're being funded by the human right. traffickers and bad guys. It's like so wake up everybody and then they're allowing the minority businesses to be destroyed in the process at least they did in minneapolis and many other places minneapolis was the worst that was ground zero for destroying all these minority businesses sure there were some white people's businesses in there too because they're they live in the communities too but it was a higher percentage of minorities right. so anyways okay right. well right. let's um I want to thank you for doing this. Give us your contact information one more time and we'll end it. Sure. It's uh, familypreservationfoundation.org. So that's that's our long URL. Uh, a short one is fpf1.org. Uh, if you come onto the website, in the top heading, it says amendment. So go to the parental rights uh, amendment and, and sign it. It gives you all the detailed information about uh, the parental rights, a, a summary. There's a great frequently asked question because people ask questions like, well, you know, what will happen to like sex abuse and, and, and physical abuse? I'm like, none of that goes away. So what people don't really understand, and I try and get people to understand our law, I'm like, our laws are not going to change. The level of scrutiny is going to change. So right now in Minnesota, for example. Well, let me just summarize. If they are abusing the child, they're sexually abusing, physically abusing, they actually really need to save this child, that still applies. It's just when there isn't. That's correct. It's when the parent loves the child. They might be poor and can't necessarily support them the way they need to, but they love them and the best place to be is with them. That's what you guys are protecting. Correct. And the most ironic part is, they will, and this is the thing that I just, I find uh, beyond asinine. And that's the only way I can describe it. And when I've talked to people about it, I'll tell you what, what the CPS and elected officials have told me. But I'm like, all right, let me get this straight. You're saying the parent doesn't have enough money to, to properly support the child. We'll, we'll, we'll say, okay, that's the case. That's fine. So you're going to pay. Take the child away, put it with the foster family, pay the foster family between $800 and $1,000 a month for 12 to 15 months to take care of this child. The maximum you know, law that a child can stay in foster care is 15 months before the court has to terminate the parent's parental rights. I said, instead of giving that money to the parent that you're saying doesn't have enough money, so you're basically going to get $15,000, traumatize the child, put it with a complete stranger and saying, okay, you know, you need a bed. We need bunk beds for the kids. We need some toys. You know, it'll be cheaper for them, literally, to help the parent than it is to remove the parent. That's why I tell everybody there's a secondary motive. It's the funding. They want the kids in foster care. And, and there's no way they can... They can 
they can uh, deny it. Because when I talk to the people in, in CPS, they're saying, well, the only way we get government funding is if we remove the children from the household. We don't get any government funding if we keep the children in the household or if we put the children with relatives. And I'm like, that still doesn't explain why the number of children have doubled in the last 20 years. I'm like, why, why isn't the children doubled? Well, we know the answers. We know it's a supply chain yeah. for the traffickers. And then they've set up an incentive to get them into this crappy system that they can take them for. Not all of them end up leaving because they don't need 9 million. They don't need all the kids. They only take who right. they need, right? right? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for all the effort that you're putting forward to get this out there. And thank you to the congressmen who have the kahunas to actually support this and do the right thing. And, um, you know, it's just so obvious. This is not a partisan situation. So thank you so much. And um, I appreciate you showing up today. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day.